so my name is Amanda Minichella. Um, I currently go to the University of Toledo. I just transferred here this year. I was originally at Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University. Um, and my talk today is going to be on the properties of color spell and outflows and really the problems of trying to identify them. Um, so a little bit on the photo stars. It's really the class one objects that we're focusing on, which kind of look like this. And if you look up photo stars, that's generally the kind of picture you'll see. You've got a nice disc going around here, and you've got the two outflows on the ends. So this starts to occur when the envelope starts to collapse from gravity. And um, you, you have this disc going around, so all the matter is starting to go into the core. And this is when your star starts to slowly build and gain mass. So what we were originally trying to do is trying to fit Gauss models to these. Because if you look here, where this kind of starts to build these nice broad outflows, this part here is actually the outflow. This center part is, well, we're not entirely sure what that is, but it could be the envelope, it could be a mixture of a bunch of different things, we're not sure, but these outside edges are what we were interested in. The, um, Advantages of using a Gauss model with this is that you don't have to smooth the data at all, and you can just fit it to all the spectra that we have. Um, the two different images here are CO transitions at, at two different energy levels. And as you can see, as you get to a higher level, you would have more noise in the data, and it's harder to see the outflows. And so that was actually one of our better sources for a Gauss model. As you can see here, it gets a lot harder to identify. There's no distinct pattern here for where you could try to identify where the outflow was. And that's really the biggest problem with this, is trying to figure out where these outflows are. And there's been a lot of different methods trying to do it, but all of it's kind of arbitrary. It depends on the person what they decide to do. So it really what this has come down to is it's been four weeks of trying to figure out what we're going to do. And it wasn't until last week that we decided. So looking at the same two sources, these are the channel maps that we get by smoothing the data into like smaller pieces as you go across the map. These are the different intensity maps. And so if you look like right along here where it starts to change, this is actually where the blue outflow would start. Um, left side of those maps that we were looking at. And right around here is where we're saying it would start for the red. And as you go up, it's a lot harder to tell where it starts for the four to three da data. Um, so far, I would say right about here is where it would start for the red, because these are actually inverted for the velocities, and over here for the blue. So this. The only advantage of this really is that you can kind of see a difference, but like right here, we're not sure what those would be, what effects it's having. Um, this, this was actually the best source for this, so there's a lot that have a lot more noise and we don't know what's going on. But this was the best method we came up with to try to identify outflows. And this is the other source. Um, this one's a little bit nicer, at least on the blue side, we think it might be tilted because of the way that you have some more over here and the fact that it's wider on this side. And again, on the four to three, it's a lot harder to see. So unfortunately, this is mostly what we've been doing for the last four or five weeks, is just trying to get to this point. And now we can move on now that we've identified at least the velocities that we're going to choose to start the outflows from. I guess I can try to answer questions now. <laughs> Go ahead. You know, where, what is the source of the data, these CO uh, observation systems? Have? Which telescope? Yeah, where did they come from? I think it was WISE, I'm not sure. I don't remember which one they said it was. Look, you know, you know which one it is, right? Scuba? Oh, scuba. 
Oh, cannot be wise. No, cannot be wise. Why can't be wise? I just in intra, right? W1, W2, W3, W4 comes to back him up as two pairs. C1, C2, who is about millimeter. Right, same for her. Yeah, it's good. I almost understood that. Um, I'd just add a comment. You epitomize what research really is. I mean, it, it takes a while to get somewhere. And, uh, you know, that's, that's part of it. You just keep fighting through and yeah. to get somewhere. It's just I know like Kendra and I have been doing that with programs. <laughs> I think we finally found a configuration that works. It's only taken us, you know, like five weeks. So. <laughs> and that's, that only works for those two sources. Really, the rest kind of look a bit nastier. Those, were, those just look kind of nice to try to describe it. Sure. Any more questions? Making these maps itself is a that horrendous job. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was that was like the other. Oh yeah. That was learning how to use the program. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Thanks a lot, man.